Hello, so in this video I thought I would show how you can use Finale Script to improve your workflow in Finale. Um, and I thought I would use some specific examples from a project I'm working on. So um, this is a transcription, um, a relatively simple transcription of uh, for guitar. And there's certain c commands that I keep having to do over and over and over. Um, and uh, either sometimes I don't like the way the shortcut is set up in Finale, because maybe it, uh, it forces me to reach far on the keyboard and use two hands instead of just using one hand, or there just isn't a shortcut. Um, so that's where Finale Script comes in handy. So let me just go ahead and show you an example. Uh, let's say you want to switch between a tool and the other quickly. So for example, I use primarily three or four tools in this project. So articulation tool, the speeding entry tool, the note entry tool, and that's really just about it because this is uh, broke music so I don't have to keep changing time signatures or doing any any really fancy stuff otherwise. Um, so instead of having to keep click clicking the uh, articulation tool in the palette, I can just assign a shortcut. In this case, um, I have, well, it's not selected, but let me select another one. I can switch by just pressing Control Option A I activate the articulation tool and then I can press Control Option S and I switch to the um, speeding entry tool and I can press Control Option N and switch to the note tool and Control Option M is measure and then I have Control Option X is my uh, smart shape tool that's already set up to use slurs because that's what I use the most you know and once again in box music you won't be dealing much with um, uh, let's say uh, hairpins and those kinds of things, uh, but of course in other types of music you would. So how does that work? Well, to set up some shortcuts, I'll show you different types. I'll start with the most simple, simple ones. So you just go to the plugin, open Finale Script. I sorry, I only have a portion of the screen screen available so that it could be clear. Let's see if this works. Eh, this still doesn't work. But anyway, you have to select Finale Script Palette from this side right here kind of hiding right now um, but once you open it you'll get this little window and there'll be uh, I have some that I created or already but you'll you should have at least the ones that come directly with um, with with the program and so basically uh, I'll start off by um, creating um, well showing you one a couple that I've created uh, let's see smart shape slur but I want to start with a simpler one let's say articulation I can't even see it here it is articulation so anyway about the, the little window you have the green button that's just to run your script stop to stop it uh, create a new script edit your script duplicate a script and I guess this is delete and then this is put in a folder although I don't use this one that much but I probably should because it's a little messy so if I double click on this one I've created already uh, the articulation uh, basically, you can see that it's kind of like an extremely simple little program and you have to use certain key commands that the, the, the uh, plugin understands. And in this case, all I really need to do for my shortcut is to go to the, to the menu item tools, which is this, and then select articulation. So as you can see, the shortcut is already, oh, actually, this is a separate shortcut. Never mind. This is a Mac shortcut that I created in a different way. Uh, and then once you've done that, essentially, that's your script. It's that simple. Just menu item and then in quotes tools, which is the first menu. And then within that, you choose articulation. So I have forward slash articulation and quotes. Now you can choose to only have it show up in your menu. And by menu, they mean the script menu. So if I go here and over here, again, I'm sorry, you can't see this fully, but I have a whole list of things. Um, but that's not that useful because I may as well just go in and select this menu. Um, but what, I, what you can do also is you can assign a shortcut, which is, of course, what I did. So you can go here and you can click, uh, try different combinations, and you have to make sure that it's one that doesn't, it's not assigned to something else already, and it'll tell you if it is, so you don't have to worry about it, deleting it. You can even have it find you one. Or, um, and that's basically it. Once you've set it up, then you can uh, just run the script. You close this. And then again here, I just do command control option A. And there's my articulation. And it's just activated. Um, so a slightly more 
complicated, I even hate to use the word complicated because it's not really complicated, would be to use uh, one of the tools that have op more than one option. So for example, the simple entry tool, you can't just have the script select simple entry because there will be nothing to select. It'll just open this, but they won't actually activate anything. So you have to be more specific. In this, uh, in my case, I set it up by default to go to quarter note, um, just because I guess most of the time you'll, I'll be using quarter note in this project. Um, but so let me show you how that one works. Um, let me open my script again, and I'll go to uh, simple entry as soon as I find it. Simple entry, here it is. And I'll double click. So here, as you can see, there's one additional step. We have menu item again, tools for this, simple entry, and then quarter note. So once again, tool, tools, simple entry, and then quarter note. And you just have to make sure that the format is right. So you have menu item, once again, open quotes, tools. Oh, and make sure you put the names uh, uppercase with capitals um, or it won't work. At least I think it won't work, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't work because the, they're all listed like that here. Okay, so now on to one that's a little bit more complicated, um, but I want to show you specifically why I created this. So if you look at this particular project, I have two layers. I have the top layer, when this, let's say, pick this one measure right here, I have G, F, E, D, C, B, and then on the second layer, I have a half note on top of the eighth note. So I have a half note G on top of the eighth note G. And of course, what happens is the half note G being empty, uh, it gets filled in by the, the eighth note G. So that means that if I print this, it'll show up as a quarter note, essentially. So that's not going to work. And I really hate to do this kind of thing. Uh, for example, if I just take this and move it over, I hate the way that looks. I don't like it at all. So I, I don't like that. Um, so the way I like to deal with that if, if um, well, anyway, the way I like to deal with that is to basically change the shape of the eighth note on the first layer so that it becomes, uh, you know, like a half note. So yeah, that I can't see through it. And of course, to do that, you have to go through a bunch of different steps. So let me go ahead and switch to what happened to my special tools. There it is. Thank you. Okay, so I'll double click on that. Oh, sorry, I have to choose my uh, note. I don't know, what is this called? Note shape something, note shape tool, oh, I guess it's right. So I double click on that. And then I have to pick my half note out of this list. Uh, actually, a whole note is better because you don't need a stem. So I just select it, bam, and there you go. So that's done. Now this is all well and good if you're just gonna do it once. But if you have to do this procedure over and over and over, it's really time consuming and so uh, I created a script that does this in one step, essentially, with one little shortcut. So I can just select this bit, and I can just do Control H, and it does got, does it all just like that. As you you could actually saw it running the program, running the script. So how did I do that? Well, let me show you. So let me go to my script, and I called it Hello Sweet Change Note Head to Empty. Very wordy. Uh, but basically we have once again menu item utilities Because it's looking it's essentially following this step right here. And let me start with that. So it goes to utilities change note heads And so so far that's what you see right here, right? Then once this opens that's where it gets a little bit trickier because now you have this little window and Here you have to be a little bit more specific So I had to say I didn't really care about this because I wanted all note heads to be affected but I wanted to change it to a specific note head. So I had to s say click selected note head near change to. Uh, this near is extremely important because some, some cases, uh, well, this is a perfect example. You have two buttons in the window that say it's the same thing. So select a note head, select a note head. So if I just tell the script to say to click on select a note head, it won't know which one I'm referring to. So I have to be more specific. I have to say click select a note head near change to. And so then it clicks on this, which then opens this. And of course, this is where you would normally select your node head. Um, and so what you'll need to do is look for the node head, or the, sorry, the symbol, I keep saying node head, but it's not necessarily a node head. Uh, the symbol that you're interested in, 
which in my case was a whole note, and then look down here for the, the corresponding uh, character. So you can just copy that, and then over here in your script, you will paste this where it said, you'll, you'll say type, then paste the symbol. So it's going to type that symbol near change two. And of course, this is the only place it could type near change two. And so it'll put it right there and it'll say hit OK. So uh, it's simple, but it can it's easy to mess this stuff up, um, actually. And, and I had to do some trial and error to get this to work. But essentially, the, the syntax is, is relatively straightforward. And it's pretty much the same for everything that you'll need to do. So I thought I would share this with you, not so much because I think you're going to be transcribing uh, guitar music, but because I thought that you might save you um, in your specific project a bit of time. So I hope this was useful and thank you very much.